Although a conventional petrol engine uses a spark from a spark plug to ignite the fuel, as you can see here, igniting gasoline with a spark is not that simple. It's actually almost impossible to do so with a conventional spark plug. So the engine and carburetor have to do some serious processing of this fuel in order for it to combust. And if you want to know how it happens, then keep watching. Hello and welcome. We're under no illusion that petrol gasoline is highly flammable. Just having a small amount in this fireproof glass here and adding a flame shows you just how flammable it really is. But despite this, gasoline, as the liquid we can see it there, is actually not combustible inside the internal combustion engine. In fact, the liquid itself inside this glass isn't really being combusted. It's evident there that the flames are actually above the fluid, so it's not the fluid itself that's on fire. So what's actually on fire is the vapours that are rising from the fluid. And so as those particles of vapour rise, they mix with oxygen in the air. And it's the oxygen that's a vital component in the combustion process of the gasoline fuel. And because the concentrated fluid down below has no oxygen in there, then this itself doesn't burn or combust. So that means if I was to remove the oxygen from this glass, then it would stop the burning from taking place. And that's what I do here. I've just placed a metal dish on top, stopping the oxygen coming into the glass and the burning or combustion has stopped. So despite it having everything else, it had the gasoline, it had the vapours and it had the heat. As soon as I removed the oxygen, the combustion ended. So that goes to show just how important oxygen is when it comes to combusting gasoline fuel. OK, so imagine we're looking inside the cylinder of an engine and let's take a look at what would happen if we tried to combust this gasoline fuel in its liquid form. And so even though we've got air above here that came in on the last induction stroke, as the piston rises on the compression stroke and compresses all of this air above it, what we have here is a concentrated amount of gasoline molecules with no oxygen mixed within it. So that means even though the right amount of heat has been generated above it by compressing those air molecules, added to which the spark fires which should create the amount of heat to combust this fuel, if it exists as a liquid like this with no oxygen mixed in within it, then there's no combustion. In fact, because it's existing as a liquid in there, even though it's something that we do regard as a highly flammable liquid, it would actually soak the spark plug and prevent it from firing. And I can demonstrate that. Here I've got a spark plug inside this fireproof glass that I've rigged up to be able to fire. And as you can see there, there is a spark. At the moment there's just air inside the glass with it, but I'm showing that it's all dry and it's sparking. And now I'm pouring in some neat fresh gasoline and submerging the spark plug. And now, no matter how much I tried, I could not get it to spark. So the fact of the matter is, there was no spark and certainly no combustion. So I bring the spark plug out of the fuel and dry it, and now we've got a spark back. OK, so that's showing that the liquid gasoline is quenching the spark, preventing the spark from occurring. But what about those vapours that are rising from the gasoline? They are now mixed with oxygen, so surely they are now combustible. Surely we only need a spark to get this to combust. So I've got my dry spark plug and I'm hovering it just over the gasoline, inside that space where all those evaporated particles are rising into. And now I'll induce the spark, and as you can see there is a spark there, but there's no combustion taking place. Even though we have evaporated fuel with oxygen, this spark isn't hot enough to ignite it. OK, so maybe it was a little bit too far above the fuel, and the evaporation was too weak there. So we'll bring it down lower, right next to the surface to see what happens there. But the same again. There's a spark, but absolutely no attempt whatsoever to ignite. So this shows us some evidence that it just can't simply be that we put liquid gasoline into an engine and it combusts. There's got to be something else there. There's got to be some processing of this gasoline. And that processing is done first by the carburetor and then by the compression within the engine's cylinder. OK, so first of all, what part does the carburetor play in making this fuel more combustible? 
Well, as air is drawn through the carburettor on its way to the engine, it passes through the restriction of the Venturi, and as it does, it speeds up drastically. This side of the restriction tends to have a higher suction pressure, as the engine works to draw that large volume of air through that small restriction. So the suction pressure, this side of the restriction, in combination with the low pressure within the restriction, means that fuel can be drawn up out of the main jet. And as it does so, the high speed air hits the fuel so hard, it breaks it into smaller particles, in what's known as atomizing it. And so now, we've got tiny globules of fuel with air all around them. The fuel is no longer existing as a liquid as we know it, it's more like a mist at this stage. And the best of it is, because there's air all around it, it's now oxygenated. And this of course means it's more combustible. There is, however, another processing of the fuel that some carburettors undertake before this. And this happens inside the main jet before the fuel is drawn out, in an area called the emulsification tube. As the engine runs and air is drawn in through the air filter and in through the carburettor, a smaller amount of this goes through a small pipeway to the main jet. And it feeds into the main jet, mixes with the fuel and emulsifies it in the process that's known as the fuel emulsification. And this is why it's called the emulsification tube. Basically, in this case, the emulsification is the mixture of air with the fuel. And so this emulsified fuel is drawn out of the main jet and processed further by being atomized, as we've already seen. So this now means that if we could see a molecule of fuel really close up, that there would be molecules of oxygen or air all around it. Obviously, this is for illustration purposes, so there'd be billions of molecules inside the cylinder here, not just what I've shown. But what this now means for the gasoline molecules is that when the piston compresses the air and fuel together, it means that because the air or the oxygen has given space between those tiny molecules of gasoline, that the spark can actually fire because we're not dealing with a liquid anymore. It's more like a mist. And another important factor about it being a mist that's in there rather than a fluid is that when the piston rises and compresses all of these molecules together, it generates heat in a way that a fluid lying on top of the piston would not, because fluid is incompressible. And the heat generated by the compression of this mist is vital for normal engine combustion. And whilst there likely be some heat generated, it's most probably not enough. At the same time, it quenches the spark plug and stops it from sparking. And so then, under normal working circumstances, it's the heat produced that gets the fuel-air mixture near to combustion point. And it's the addition of the spark at the right time that tips this heat over the edge, resulting in combustion. And evidently, when the fuel and air isn't compressed together, then as we saw earlier with the spark here in the mist of all those fumes, there's absolutely no combustion whatsoever because we haven't got enough heat in that area. We've got the fumes, we've got the oxygen, and we've got the spark. But because we haven't got that heat, there's going to be no combustion. And that's where the engine itself overcomes this. It's got the fuel, it's got the oxygen, and it's got the heat, and it's got the spark. So there's going to be controlled combustion. So hopefully now we can appreciate that there's more to combusting gasoline fuel than we may have originally realised. On top of that, we can now gain a larger appreciation of just how the carburettor and the engine process gasoline in order to make it combustible within the engine. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video and please do take a look down in the description below where I've got some links to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. The best of it is they're printable so you can take them into the workshop with you and work at your own pace. There are some paid downloads but most of them are and will continue to be free. And I shall be continuing to add new free content here, so please do keep your eyes on this side of the site. And in the meantime, I shall be back soon. Thank you for watching.